Robert Rivas Radio, Tejano, and much more. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Art Tijerina. Art, welcome to Robert Rivas Radio. Hey, man, appreciate you coming out here and, uh, you know, looking me up, trying to find me, man. Uh, you know, people are always asking me what's going on, what's happening with me, but we're going to kind of set a little bit to the story today. I tell you what, Art, you know, I've... I've had conversations about you here and there. Of course, me being in the music business, siempre, you know, there's there's questions, there's answers, there's, you know, fun facts, as I call them. And one thing that I've always talked about you when I do talk about you is when we talk about people who have paid their dues, that's you, Art. And, I'm, and I mean this because I remember back in the 80s, dude, there used to be a bar in San Antonio called the R&R Bar and Grill. And I remember, dude, you used to go in there. There would be a DJ playing, nothing else, just a DJ. I remember you walking in there, dude, giving him a cassette. Or a Ford, something. You would give him something. He'd give you the microphone from the DJ mic. You'd go out there in the middle of the dance floor by yourself, dude. And he'd just play the track, and you were just jamming by yourself. You wanted people to know about Art Tijerina. Do you remember that, man? I, I do, man. I remember those days. You know, uh, it was just, uh, you know, just coming into town and just deciding, you know, basically what I wanted to do. And, and a lot of people don't know that when I moved to uh, San Antonio, I, I didn't know anybody moving from Bryan, uh, Bryan Texas. And, and uh so just moving there, I stayed. I probably stayed in my car for about a month, month and a half, home not homeless, I guess you could say, you know. But you know, my my intentions and my goals were to to have a band and to to break into the music industry because, uh, you know, just go by going by what different people said, you know, just kind of fed me that that uh, the idea that maybe you know maybe I could do something, or maybe I could maybe I can break into this market, and uh, and it's been over twenty something years now, so it's, it's still kind of. Still, just kind of amazed at what uh, what I've where I've been, uh, what I've done, what I was able to see, and um, the things that yet to come. That is simply unreal. And art, really, you know, you're saying 20 plus years. Some singers don't make it 20 plus minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really, and I mean that. It's that art. It's that everything got started for you in Bryan, Texas. But that your first band was their name was Algo Suave, right? Right. I had my first Tejano band was uh, Algo Suave. I, I started it. Uh, with some good friends of mine there, it kind of spun off of a. Uh, uh, my brothers had a band there called Tierra Mala, and uh, I just uh, I sang with them one or two songs and uh, had some people hear me and say, "Man, you should start your own band." And my first gig was actually at a Jamaica there at in one of the Catholic churches in in Bryan, and and it kind of took off from there. It just kind of uh, added fuel to the flame and uh, just kind of went into getting a band, a full band together and playing gigs and. Uh, from there. I remember I was back in the day también I was working with a band before I got into the more of the DJing uh, T-Town and all that other stuff I was working with a band called La Venganza Band yeah. and I remember dude I remember when I was working with them and uh, lo and behold, they said, hey, man, we have a new singer. You know, his name's Art Tijerina. And I said, who? <laughs> they yeah. said, Art Tijerina. I said, okay, sure, man. And I remember you playing with La Venganza, one of the local bands that's still around here in San Antonio. Yeah, that's awesome. I hadn't seen those guys. They're, they're really, really uh, great guys, really nice to me when I, you know, when I jammed with them and gave me an opportunity to get out there and, and uh, you know, and show my stuff, show what I could do and and I, I owe a lot to those guys, and and uh, also I like there's a, there was a gentleman that helped me out back then, and he's he uh, he passed away. He rest in peace. Uh, I don't know if you remember Manuel Solis. I don't know if Manuel you Solis, of course. He, yeah, he was a, he was one of the, the the people out there that really helped me and gave me an opportunity to uh, to uh, to kind of shine and and uh, help me out in the Tejano music industry. So, and uh, there's just a lot of people out there that. That I just go on and ramble that that it gave me that that open door and I really appreciate that. Or correct me if I'm wrong. I'm 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 talking to you here and I'm back in the day. Back in that day, we're talking La Venganza band. Didn't you wear a cowboy hat? I did. <laughs> okay. I did. I lost all my hair through that cowboy hat. <laughs> I did. Uh, you know, I did. And, and you know, I coming from a small town. My dad's. Well, as a matter of fact, crazy thing is uh, March fifteenth is my dad's. Um, I'm heading. We're uh, heading back home. It's his ninety fifth birthday. So you know, growing up like that, I always saw my dad with a hat. He wore a hat all his life and, and uh, overalls, and and I enjoyed that man for a while. And I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed wearing a hat, and then and just kind of you know, I started thinking, well, that's that's not really me. You know, it, it was. It's kind of it, you know that that whole thing of the Tejano industry uh, uh, starting out. You know, everybody wearing the same shirts and the same look and everything like that, and and so you just kind of got away from that, you know, and. 
All I'm going to tell you, Art, is that I'm getting ready to give you competition, brother, because I'm right there, brother. <laughs> I gave up the cowboy hat as well about two years ago, and I said, that's it, man. Yeah. Even ball caps, I said, that's it, man. I'm going to put my hair back, tie it up in a ponytail, and whatever happens, happens, there man. There you go, man. There you go. Okay, well, after Loving Gonza Band, I know you kind of uh, uh, bounced around here from band to band, and then you landed with the City View Band. Talk the to City me about View. that. Yeah, City View. They, uh, as a matter of fact, this was one time when I was, uh, Manuel Solis had given me a, a room to stay at at his house, and... Uh, and uh, some of the guys got in touch with him and had asked him a few questions about me and that they were holding interviews. Uh, 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 sorry, yeah, interviews, I guess you could say. Is, uh, uh, what is the word for it? Um, uh, whatever you go, try out. Tryouts. There okay. you go. Okay. There you go. Okay. Go. And they were having tryouts. And uh, I went and, and uh, I met the guys from the City View. And, and that was really cool because, you know, at that time they had a, a lot of great hits. You know, Ruben Cervantes was the original singer. And, and uh, of course, uh, Esa Mujer, No Todo Lo Que Brilla Soro. A bunch of great songs. And for me to go and be able to sing and, and, uh, and to uh, try out with these guys was, was really cool. Refresh my memory on this art. When you were with City View Band, did y'all record a CD with you being lead vocalist? I did. I did. We recorded one CD as uh, Vueltas y Vueltas. And that song went on to to one of the songs that we re-recorded with Grupo Vida. So, so it was a bigger hit with Vida than it was with City View. Yes, yes. Wow. Interesting, interesting. Well, i tell you what. After the City View Band, then este, you jumped on board with Grupo Vida. Am I correct? Right. I, I got out, uh, you know, I, I got out of the industry and just worked, uh, worked a regular job for a while. And a real job. A Come real job. And then uh, <laughs> uh, shortly after, uh, I think it was shortly after the this, this Gusto album with Eddie, uh, some, I guess they were having their differences and whatnot, but uh, they were looking for a new singer and there again, uh, uh, they got in touch with me and asked if I wanted to go audition for them and and I did, and, and I, I landed the part, and uh, that went on for 20, 20 years. I tell you what, let's take a break right now, and we're going to start talking about Grupo Vida. But for right now, let's go ahead and play one of your first hits with Grupo Vida, Esa Mujer. Cool. Cool. Robert Rivas Radio, Tejano, and much more, and I'm here with Art Tijerina.
deixa morrer Esa mujer, esa mujer, oh, esa mujer, oh, no, 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 no. Robert Rivas Radio, Tejano, and much more. And I'm back here with Art Tijerina. And I got to tell you, man, that song, Esa Mujer, of course, there's nothing like the original. I always say it, man. I'm always saying, you know what? There's nothing like the original song. And every once in a while, there's a singer or a band that comes out with a remake of a song. And you know what? There's an exception with U.S. World singing Esa Mujer. I mean, um, who came up with the idea with this song, Esa Mujer? Well, I did. I've always liked the song. You know, I thought it, I've always thought it was a great song. Um, you know, uh, it, the lyrics are great. Uh, and uh, like I said, all, all in all, it's just a great song. And we kind of rearranged it a little bit. If you listen to the original, you listen to our version of it. Uh, um, so we decided, you know what, let's just lay it down. Let's record it. So, and it's always, and it's, a, and it's a fan favorite. It's a it's a show favorite. Everybody likes to hear the song. And and a matter of fact, we uh, when I was with Grupo Vida, we had a, a deal they called Be The Palooza, which, uh, which would invite different artists to come and, and sing in this small concert type of uh, setting. Um and we had the uh, the honor to actually play with the, uh, the original guys from uh, City View Band and have them perform that song. Wow. So that was really neat. Yeah, that was cool. How interesting. Now, este, Art, now being with Grupo Vida, este, you were with them for 20 plus years, what is that? At least, yeah, 20 years. There we are. Okay, now, I'm going to touch your memory bank here. How many CDs did you release with Vida? 10 CDs. Wow, 10, 10 CDs. Yeah, 10 CDs. 10 CDs. That's a lot of work, brother. It's a lot of work, a lot of time, uh, and a lot of songs. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Now, with the, with Vida, were all ten CDs off of Texas Records? No, um, I want to say maybe, uh, um, maybe off of a couple. Of, I want to say about maybe five or six were with with Texas Records. And after Texas, who was it? And then we we into our own, uh, doing our own label. I got you. I got so, you. Hmm? I got you. Wow, how interesting. Well, okay. Now you're with Vida, and things are kicking ass, right? Yep. And lo and behold, what happens? You're touring with the Dixie Chicks. Yeah, Talk yeah. to me about this, dude. That was cool. That was back in uh, on the Fly Tour of uh, 2000. Uh, that was a really neat deal. Uh, I came with uh, back when Sunny Salcedo, of course, uh, one of the great, one of the fabulous accordion player, a great friend, uh, was playing with the band. And I think one of the girls approached him at uh, at that time was Hermes Music, uh, and she was looking for someone to teach accordion. I, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. But I think he kind of pitched the uh, the deal of the band, and, and uh, she shows up at one of our concerts at uh, Camargo Park. And so it was kind of cool. You know, she comes up, and this is uh, um, uh, Emily from uh, from the Dixie Chicks. She comes up, introduces herself, and, and they're just kind of getting that uh, getting that uh, uh, that news of, hey, we're going to be touring with the Dixie Chicks. It was kind of surreal, you know, to, <laughs> to, to, to you actually get on there, and you get to the shows, and you're like, wow, we're actually here. Um, those those shows were quite interesting because you know the whole concept was uh, okay. Well, we'll get there and we're gonna do Tejano and if you know because we don't know what kind of fan base it is. Uh, if they don't, you know, they, if they for some reason they don't like the way we play, well maybe we can throw some English music, country and stuff and, and sure. get it, keep it sure. going. Uh, but after we did our sound check, we were informed that we were just to only play Tejano music. So the gigs that we get there, you know, we're at, you know up up north, northern states. Uh, in Iowa somewhere with no one has ever heard of Tejano music, uh, maybe, or very rarely, and uh, 20,000, 20 plus people, and, and uh, that was kind of nerve-wracking to know that that's all we're going to be doing. But it came off. It, we, we were able to pull it off, and we did it for, you know, a good seven, eight months. So. What was the biggest crowd out of all of that touring with the Dixie Chicks? What was the biggest crowd you performed to? Um... You know, I'm not too sure. I, you know, they were all in that in that range, you know, 15... 15, 10, 15, 000, 20, 000 people. Any, any quick, interesting, fun fact about touring with the Dixie Chicks? Any little fun little story? Uh, you know, we're now. We're, you know, <laughs> now if you now, don't want to say nothing. <laughs> no, 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 you know, now it just comes back, you know, because uh, it, it, it just goes, you know, we just, we had a great time. You know, it was, it was a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of cool places we got to see. We got to, to, uh, to celebrate uh, Natalie's birthday, one of her birthdays with her. Uh, at that time, which was a lead singer, so 
it was really fun. It was just a good time. It's fun. That's cool. Now, um, of course, the Dixie Chick tour. Um, how long did that last? Uh, about seven, eight months. Roughly. That's simply awesome, dude. Yeah, That's yeah, simply that awesome, dude. To expose yourself, you know, and the band like that, and of course, in front of, if you know, even more so, the, the Dixie Chicks. They weren't asking you to do something that that you guys, uh, you know, were not this, uh, known for. Right. They wanted you to stick to what you guys were known for, your right. your, your foundation, which was Tejano music, Correct. which was simply awesome. Right. But of course, you're very versatile. You do play a lot of country, right? Now? Yes, yes, we did a lot of country. Matter of fact, we recorded a country CD. Um, a prisoner of a honky tonk, and uh, got some good airplay, a, a good song out of it. Uh, because I love you is probably one of the one of the most uh, recognized songs that, that from that CD. There you go. Now I'm, I'm you're gonna have to um, educate me on this one here because I'm gonna come out of the blue with this because I don't know. Okay. Um, OS Art, are you a songwriter también? I am. I do. I write songs. And the crazy thing about it is I'm I'm more fluent into writing English country songs than I am into. Uh, Writing the Hano songs, I've written more English songs than anything else. Uh, it just becomes, you know, maybe just I don't know why. Just, just like I said, it's more fluent to me. It is what it is. Have, have yeah. any of your songs that you've uh, written have they been recorded? Have they been put on disc or not? Yeah, uh-huh. uh, because I love you. Actually, because I love you uh, was a spinoff of one of uh, the Hano songs that we did record. Porque te quiero was a cumbia. Right. And we kind of just changed the lyrics. Um, <clears throat> And all, there's probably about uh, you know about three or four songs on that CD that that I that I co-wrote, uh, and then we were in the process of doing a new country CD that that wrote some more songs. And I'm, and I'm in the future I still you know want to want to do some of the stuff that I wrote. I got you. Okay, so after the Dixie Chicks, now let's move on to where we're at right now. Now you were with Grupo Vida for like 20 years, and uh, things came to an end. Hey man, nothing lasts forever. I'm telling you, man. There are bands that don't last twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah. And you were you were together with Vida for twenty years. Right, right. Um, you know, just really, just quickly. I mean, it just was it just time to part ways. Yeah, it was time to part ways. You know, uh, uh, you know, you come to to realize things aren't uh, um, where they should be in your life, and 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 uh, you tend to find you tend to find uh, direction and and other things and and. Uh, and you see that maybe that's that's where you should, where you need to be in life, and you feel good about it. So you you have to make those tough choices or easy choices, or, you know, whatever it is at the time. But you make those choices, and, and there can be no regrets. You just have to to be to to just uh, just be happy with what happened in your life in the past, and 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 be happy with your your life that you chose to be with in the future. There ain't no doubt, Art, that you've made your mark in Tejano music. You really have. You paid your dues. You've been out there, man. The road can pound on a person, man. Oh, yeah. No doubt, especially 20 years. Right. It will pound on you. And before you know it, man, when you're when you're not touring anymore, when you're just kind of like in between bands or just taking a break from everything, sometimes. And I can speak. I can speak for you know out of out of you know. I've got. Uh, <laughs> I know what I'm talking about here because I've been through it as well. Right. In a sense, right. you know, your first weekend away from not doing anything, just being at home, you're going like. Wow, what am I doing here? Yeah, I'm supposed to be somewhere. This yeah. isn't right. Yeah. I, mean, I know you were sharing a story with me yeah. about your first New Year's Eve at home. Right? How did yeah. you feel about this, dude? I, it was awesome, you know. I was able to to uh, to share that time with my wife and uh, and to be able to know that, that you know I, I don't have to go on stage and to just relax and uh, um, just enjoy it. Just you know, and that's, as is a lot of things that I'm able to do now, spending time with. You know the family. Uh, you know my wife. I love her very much, and, and to be able to be home and and not do anything, being in bed on Friday night at you know eight thirty, nine o'clock, watching TV. I'm like, wow, man, and 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 to feel, you know, you being in bed, you're like, man, I'm tired. I don't, I don't know how I did that that long, you know. But you know, there again, you know, you're out there, and, and your body kicks into that, that that mode where you have to do what you got to do, and it's not. Uh, it's not a bad thing. It's just you know. It's 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 a big difference because believe me, you know me talking on the DJ set. I played in front of hundreds and hundreds of people at clubs and the the, the weddings, the debuts, the the New Year's Eves, the Christmas Eve, the Christmas days. And don't get me wrong, you know, and I think you're gonna understand me in this. It's one thing to be uh, performing in front of crowds and talking and joking and whatever. But at the end of the day, man, yes, they're your listening family. But you want to be with your own family, oh, also. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. You know, there's, uh, you know, when the lights go down and everything's being put away, well, then it's, you know, the, you know, you, you know, you miss your family. You know, you miss your family, and you're like, wow, man. Tomorrow when I wake, I get to climb inside this bus and go to sleep, and you know, so it, you know, it all has its, uh, you know, it's, it's, 
it's it's pros and cons, you know. So. I remember one Christmas Eve when I was playing at T Town. I didn't want to go work it, but we were open Christmas Eve. I had my kids. I had to go drop them off at six thirty, get to work by seven o'clock, and I remember the streets were empty. Yeah. Empty. Everybody's with their families and doing whatever. I'm dropping off my kids back, you know, to to their mom. I'm headed to T Town, and I'm thinking to myself, this isn't right. Right. You know, to me, some there's just some certain days that should be for family. Right. But unfortunately, in this business art, I think you know this. I mean, we're in, you know we're in the business of entertaining people when they're off. Right. You know what right. I mean? Right. And that's just the way it is. That's right. part right. of the sacrifices right. entertainers like yourself right. make. No can art. Right? Yeah, you're right. You know, we, you know, what, you know, everybody's like, hey, well, you know what? It's it's uh, you know, the whole family's here, so let's go out. You know, even you know, I myself, I find myself doing that. Hey, you know, we're here. Let's find some live music somewhere. And in that token, those guys are out there working, you know, while we're enjoying the music. And it's just, it's a vicious cycle, you know. you got to kind of look at it and go, okay. Well, and, and, you know, to step back and go, wow, these guys are out here, you know, performing for, you know, whatever their amount is. You know, their dollar amount, but sometimes it's it's much more than that. And you know? sometimes it's, it's not enough. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? And, and you know, bands, you know, they, they make a lot of sacrifices to do what they do. But it is what it is, man. Uh, they're in search of... I guess the brass ring, man. You know, they're they're just right. looking to to entertain, and and whatever comes out of it comes out of it. And not everybody is as fortunate as you are. And I'm not going to say you were lucky because you were not. You were more. You you earned your keep, dude. I'm I'm telling you, I saw okay. it firsthand. Okay. Nobody can tell me stories about you because yeah. I saw you firsthand, yeah. dude. <laughs> what you're telling me about living out of your car, whatever. I didn't see that firsthand, but I can only imagine, dude, because a lot of people sacrifice. Oh yeah. You know whatever they got to do to 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 you know uh, to chase their dream. Right. You know, you know what I mean? Right. Right. You know you sacrifice a lot of time. Um, and, and a lot of you know you can't you can never have that back. So you have to. Sometimes you get to that point where you're like, well, you know, did I, you know, if I quit now, is it all going to be in vain? So you have to think, okay, what did what did I really accomplish here? What did I do? Did I did I do what I wanted to do? Did I get where I wanted to get? And is, is it enough? Where I don't want to have to sacrifice anymore, you know? So that's right. I tell you what. Let's go ahead and talk about what's going on. Este, this coming Friday, it's the fanfare is around the corner, and you're performing at fanfare and at the Cadillac Bar. It's the, this coming Friday, right? Right. This coming Friday, I'm gonna be there. Um, I'm gonna be doing uh, autographs out there. Uh, fanfare. Uh, I'm gonna, you know, I, I I didn't know I was gonna be performing until it was kind of like a last minute thing. What but, time are you but, performing uh, at fanfare? Right? Uh, the 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 time show six fifteen. So uh, and. Uh, I, mean, I can't remember the stage it's going to be at, but there's a lot of stuff will be going on. They'll find you. And I promise you, the finger fans will find you. And I'm going to have some some uh, some autograph stuff out there, and and uh, I'll just be you know shaking hands and talking to people, and, and come on out and check out the you know what's going on and check out the music. Okay, now you're going to be playing at Fanfare early, and then that same evening you're going to be at the Cadillac Bar, right? I'm going to be at the Cadillac Bar, and I got some great friends of mine that are going to be sharing the stage with me. Uh, uh, jamming with me, some guys from Guys Say will be back in me. There's a, they're a great band out of Austin. Um, my good friend Hugo Guerrero is going to be playing with me on the keyboards. Uh, uh, talented musicians, so it's going to be really fun. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's a fun time, and uh, you know, got people coming to check it out to, just to see what, what's going on with Arthur Hitting Arts. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm who I am, and I'm going to just do my music and have a good time. Perfect. Art, what is in the future for Arthur Hitting Arts? Well, you know, I continue to just kind of, to just kind of put in cruise cruise mode right now. Um, I'm recording a new uh, CD. Uh, I got a single coming out hopefully soon. Uh, it's an old uh, um, mariachi song, La Misma, um, and I had uh, the opportunity to get uh, Brando Mireles, uh, which is a very very talented uh, sure. keyboard player. He did sure. a lot of the stuff for Grupo Mas in the early years, and a lot of stuff that you hear from Grupo Mas is, is a lot of his arrangements. Um, and uh, we did it kind of like that old style retro. Um, so that should be coming out soon, and I'm thinking I'm sure people will enjoy it. And I got a new CD after that shortly after, doing some English and some English in Tejano. But uh, just keep your ears open. I, I you know, I I, uh, I have a uh, um, an email that people can get in touch with me. So all that will be available at the at the uh, fan fair. No, Art, it's the, let's do a couple of little fun facts here, man. Well, not fun facts, but let's see if we get some... some, some you would answer a couple of questions here okay. for some fun questions. Okay. Art, you don't have a Facebook yet, right? I don't have a Facebook. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a Facebook. Uh, you know, that's, that's a... You know, Art, my cat and my dog have Facebook. Right, yeah. Art, if they can have a Facebook. I know Art yeah. and Ina can have a Facebook here, dude. Yeah, I... You know, I, I you know, fan, uh, Facebook is, is is a great uh, tool. 
uh, when it's used correctly. But you know, it just it all depends on the timing. I think sure, you know, you know, sure. Sometimes because you can get it's a lot of negativity through that also, and so it just depends. You know, and uh, and eventually I will. You know, like I said, I don't. I really don't want to put. You know, do this thing full blast. You know, because I did it for so long. It's kind of uh, kind of a pick and choose type of thing. You know, where I, what I, where I, you know, not not trying to be egotistical or anything, but where I want to play and when I want to play is just. Um, just kind of taking it easy, you know. Okay, Art, um, on your time off, now that you got this time off, man, so we can kick back and relax, what do you do to kick back and relax? What does Art Tejerina do? I mean, do you watch a movie? you go watch a Spurs game? Cop? What do you do, Art? Um, nothing really, man. I, you know, I, I kind of just, you know, I, I just, I just, now I'm able to look at what's going on in the weekends and, and make plans with my family and get to do things that I didn't get to do, either whether it's, you know, you know whether it's just a, a you know was a drive somewhere to go into Fredericksburg, whether it's a, you know a, a day out at just at the movies, or it's a day at the flea market, or uh, or whatever you know, and and it, or if it's a, you know some some concerts that I've been wanting to go see. As a matter of fact, I got a great one. My wife just bought me tickets to a uh, country artist, an older guy, Hal Ketchum. He's one of my favorites, and and that's really you know really cool to be able to go see him in Green, which is uh, we go to Green a lot. Green Hall, yeah, sure. Green Hall, that's a really cool sure. place. And, uh, so just to, just to hang out and and, and kind of you know I just turned well just turned but uh, uh, 47 in 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 June, so I'm hitting 48. So I'm just kind of you know kind of. Letting the letting the foot off the gas a little bit and relaxing. So. You know what? It sounds to me like if you're still just trying to, like, <laughs> say, "Wow, man!" You know, I've got all this time off, man. Wow, like, you know, right now you're just really trying to embrace your time with your right. family, exactly. and then from there, whatever else comes along with it, then it does. What is that? Right, and, and, and it's a and it's a uh, uh, something that 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 I just don't want to say. You know, if somebody somebody approaches me about a gig. I say, oh yeah, well I'll take it. It is something that I talk over with my family, you know, and make sure that that uh, that they understand, and, and not and not just be about me and, and my needs, you know. Right. You know, so right. Kind of. So make it's kind of like a family decision right. now, right? right, right Everything exactly, yeah. exactly. Sure. Okay, Art. You know what, man? I really appreciate you being on my morning show. It's like I said, and did this interview. Now, before I shut this down, is that do you want to say any closing things to your fans? Yeah, I just want to say, you know. Uh, there's a lot of stories going out, you know, and I've heard this before, you know, there's two sides of the stories and there's the truth, you know. So, uh, you know, the fans, you know, I've never considered to people as fans. I always consider them as friends because, you know, if, you know you've been there and you're always there and uh, people don't pick, pick and choose. And, 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 you know, like I said, there's no, uh, you'll never hear me talk bad about anybody or anything that they do. There's a lot of... Uh, a lot of room to support music in general, you know, whether it's me, whether it's the other bands, you know, I, I always stress that, you know, support the music. Um, those people, the other, they have families, they have, you know, it's the same thing, but uh, as far as support wise, just, just support what you can and, and I appreciate the fans and the friends and uh, I'll say fans again, sorry, uh, the friends <laughs> that, that, have, that have followed me throughout the years, you know, and that are still there, that have been there from, day one you know and i really appreciate that and and there's been rumors that i turn my back on a lot of people which is not true uh you know i grew up uh i grew up uh, a humble kid and from Bryan, texas and i'll always be that person so you know if wherever i'm at regardless if it's whether i'm playing see me in a restaurant see me pumping gas you know come up and say hello i've never you know, I'll never just say, well, I'm too busy for anybody. You know, um, let me just say this, Art, as them, and I'm going to say this to the fans, to my listeners, and everybody in general, is that at the end of the day, separate whatever's being said out there and just enjoy the music. Right. Embrace the music. Just leave it about that. Leave it about the music. Whatever drama comes out of whatever's happening, just put that to the side, man. You're going to go out to fanfare. You're going to go wherever you see Art Tijerina. I mean, don't tell them, hey, what's going on here? What happened? Whatever. Separate that, man. Just kick back. Have a beer, have a cold Coke or whatever, have a sofa taco, and enjoy art to hitting that music. No, no. Yeah, that's right, man. Thank you, man. Thank you for, uh, you know, thank you everybody for understanding that. You know, life's too short to be worried about, uh, about what's, you know, what's what what is and what isn't, uh, and especially if it's, you know, somebody else's stuff going on. You know, that's right. And if they want drama, just turn on the TV and watch Jerry Springer. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> 
right. Art, thank you very much for joining me on Robert Rivas Radio. And I told Art, Art, I mean, what song do you want to finish up with? He goes, Robert, let's do El Coyote. No can Art? Coyote, you know, the Coyote reason being is, is that's my, my dad's... Uh, uh, favorite song you know like I said I'm celebrating with him on his uh, and that's another thing you know I would have got to be there on this on this special day and and uh, he's really enjoying me going down there and every time I go down there he's like I said he's 95 he he wants me to sing that song for him so uh, to my father Trinidad Tijerina uh, the leader of the band you know uh, dedicate this song to him there you go Art Tijerina on Robert Rivas Radio Tejano and much more ser 